Good morning everyone, hello and welcome back to So What If I Sew, uh, or welcome if you're new. I'm Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related and you may notice I'm still a bit throaty but I feel so much better. Um, now I should explain, so before we get into today's Simple Saturday Sew, which I am really excited about, um, I need to tell you two things. Firstly, next weekend Simple Saturday Sew was not filmed next weekend. It was filmed last week and this week because it's me making Adam's birthday present, which is a simple sew because I was terrified of messing something up for him. Um, so the canon won't quite be right. I will be a lot better before I'm a lot worse, which you'll see in the next video. <laughs> but um, yeah, I wasn't very well the last two weeks. Um, but we're getting there, we really are. It's quite early in the morning um, on a Saturday. And I'm aiming for you to see this today because I have got an insanely busy weekend. Um, well, it's, it's busy, but it's also, it's got weird timings. So, yeah, I might as well catch up, why, why not? Um, today, I need to, uh, this is gonna sound really weird. So we've got friends coming for di lunch tomorrow. We've also got people looking around the house today, uh, cause obviously the landlords are still trying to sell our flat, which is very annoying. Um, but yeah, so we have people coming today at four, landlords then coming an hour before to like clean and stuff, which is really nice of them actually, because you know, we don't really want to be spending our weekends cleaning our house for strangers. Um, and then I've also got a hair appointment at four because this is ridiculous. My roots are enormous. You can park a bus in there. Um, and my hair appointments tend to go on quite long. So... I've kind of got this morning that's usable and I have to go down to town, I need to get everything for lunch tomorrow, I need to do a lot of pre-cooking for lunch tomorrow, I need to do some pre-cooking for tonight, but I have to do that before the landlord and be done, before the landlords get here to clean the kitchen because otherwise I'm going to be cooking and be like, well, uh. um, So I need to do that, I need to package up my mum's birthday present and send it because it's her birthday next weekend. Uh, Adam's present is already wrapped in the cupboard. So, you know, trying to get ahead of myself. I also have a lot of work to do for my MA this weekend. Um, and there's something else that I've forgotten that I'm sure will pop up at some stage. Um, so it's quite a busy day today and I'm on a bit of a timetable. But I wanted to get my Saturday sew in. And I was thinking this week what to do. Because I was going to do the free underwear pattern from Sozo Vlog. Which I, I've got the fold over elastic, I've got the jersey for, it would be so lovely. My printer has given up on life, so I can't print any PDFs at home, which is really annoying. So that will have to wait, I think, realistically, until another video. Maybe I'll do an underwear pattern roundup or something. Um, so I was thinking, what have I got in the house that I could do? Which is always a good way to start sewing projects, actually. <laughs> Look at fabric you own, and patterns you own. Um, so I'm going to be making another of the tops I'm wearing right now. So let me stand up so you can see. This is the So DIY Miri Tank. Now the light balance is going to be awful because it's black um, and it's so hard to show black on camera. But the Miri Tank is um, a fantastic pattern actually. You can get it in a V-neck or a scoop neck. Um, and it is just a sort of nice sleeveless tank. It's very comfortable and it's got one very important feature which is that it's got cup sizes. So I have made like a size six, I think, or a size eight, but with a G to H um, bra cup, which is just revolutionary, I'm sorry. Absolutely amazing. Um, oh, I just love it. So you can see when I wear this, even though it obviously fits my shoulders, it fits the rest of my body proportionately, you can't see my bra outside, look at that. How I think is that? The arm side actually works for people with a bust. <laughs> And um, yeah, there is actually enough room in it and it does make me look like I have a kind of shelf there, which is very annoying. Um, I love this actually. I've got so much wear out of this top already. So this version is made in a viscose marica from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. I'm going to be making another version today. I'm thinking, I was thinking, I was like, oh, I should do the scoop neck because it would be good to see both. But I really like the V-neck. I really do. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure which one I'll make. I mean, I already have a V-neck and the fabric we're using is black. So I feel like I should probably make the scoop neck because I've got one of these. Let's make the scoop neck. And we're gonna make it in this awesome fabric from Stitch and Ink Fabrics. 
you see there's a bit of a theme, um, which is really cool. Again, it's black, so I'll try and hold it up to the camera. And it's got these cute like suns and moons on it. And it's just like a really nice structured cotton poplin, which I thought will interface really well. And it will go really well with how this pattern like sits and how it works. So my mannequin's so high today because I was hemming stuff. So I put it right up last night. Um, and now I just forgot that it was so high. Um, so we're going to make a mirror tank in this lovely fabric. It should be a very quick sew because there are, I think, four pattern pieces, a front, a back, only oh, two backs because there's a centre back seam and then there's just a facing all the way around. So we need to interface, if I pull it up. This is really badly interfaced because when I was making it, I had a deadline to hit to make the final pattern by. So I have actually remembered to buy interfacing, how prepared I am. There is interfacing. I actually have the correct fabric weight for interfacing. The iron is already set up over here behind the mannequin. And uh, here is a PDF copy of the pattern that I have printed earlier. So, without further ado, let's cut some fabric out and hopefully have a quick sew. The other thing I'm going to do in this video is try and talk to you guys a bit more. Because I would say, with the simple projects, I was like, oh, well, you know, they should be like short videos, they should be simple, but I don't feel like I'm engaging with you guys enough while I'm doing it. But I'm really enjoying this actual series because it's allowing me to like carve out time in my diary to sew even if it's like you know a 30 minute project or something and I found that what am I three three weeks in four weeks into doing this and I actually found my sewing motivation has increased massively because I am giving myself time and permission to sew in what is honestly a very busy schedule I'm, I'm a schedule orientated person I have to be I do a lot so putting it in my schedule as a kind of commitment really helps um, so fingers crossed we will have a lovely merry tank um, and yeah it will be it will be a quick video but I'll try and talk you guys through more of what I'm doing because it's not a pattern I've shown on here before and hopefully we can just have a bit of a catch up as well. to do is something that you're not technically meant to do in the pattern which is to sew my back facing pieces together you may have seen in the time lapse which unfortunately ran out just before I finished cutting actually um and I didn't realize so you'll notice that I really struggle to fit this piece on so what I've done is just added a seam allowance it's meant to be a continuous facing but frankly as I've already made the pattern before I know it's not the end of the world and the interfacing is a continuous piece so what I'm going to do is, hold on, yeah, um, I'm going to stitch this together and then I'll interface it as one piece and that'll stabilise it enough, that'll be fine. So that's our interfacing there, um, shiny side down so I don't forget, the iron is on next to me and you're not going to see me for a second while I do this and then we can talk a little bit more but you should be able to hear my voice which, you know, hopefully is still useful. So let's grab our machine, I think I have like black and navy thread on at the moment which it'll do um black is the top thread thankfully so it will sh like it won't show i don't think it matters desperately to either to be honest you know so especially for the facing like this bobbin is i'm kind of doing that thing you know where you sort of just try and make your bobbins run out which 
I'm going to do it this way because I know that that line is. So what I've done, by the way, is I, I added a seam allowance, but I didn't measure it. What I did is this white line here is the selvage edge. So I lined the pattern piece up with the where the actual fabric pattern begins. So I know I need to sew along this line to create the correct size back facing. Um, I also, earlier I said it was the G to H. I'm actually using the E to F cup size bracket. Um, and I'm making an American size two, which I think is a six, I think. I have no idea, I'm so bad at American sizing. So, I love my knot button, by the way. Um, and I've now found out I, I just get to have this machine, which is really exciting. I love it, honestly. Right. There we go. So, now we're going to do a little bit of interfacing together. Yeah, my bobbin's doing that thing where... There's one thing I've noticed. So, obviously, this machine is my first one with a drop-in bobbin. And what I have in fact noticed, let's move you guys so you can now see me, hello. Um, what I have noticed is for a drop-in bobbin, when it gets towards the end of the bobbin, it gets really temperamental. Um, because obviously it's not being fed through in the same way, so I think it struggles with tension. But I've spoken to other people, apparently this is, this is a thing with drop-in bobbins. This machine is my first one that's had that functionality. Let's tip you a bit so you can see hopefully what I'm doing. There we go. You know what I was thinking is I used to have such a small sewing space because it was in the living room. So on the one hand I had loads of ironing space because we had a breakfast bar so you could just put the board on. But equally, there we go, press that nice and flat. Um, right now I'm like oh my god I have no space. And it's, it's funny isn't it how you get used to different amounts of space. Like I would say I was a lot more economical with the way I used my space before because I literally had to be. Whereas now I'm quite messy and then go, oh my god, I have no space. It's like, yeah, well, do you know why you have no space, Jess? Because <laughs> your stuff is everywhere. So that is perfect. Um, cutting my interfacing on the fold has meant that when I match it up, I know it's the right size. Um, so I will quickly press this on and then show you guys. Um, also, I cannot believe, I, I'm so embarrassed about this because it's an idiotic thing. But I'm gonna tell you guys, in case anyone's done the same thing and hopefully will make me feel better. I have had this iron for three years. Do you know what I just noticed? I have a steam dial there. I've only ever used these buttons. I don't know why, I just never registered that I had a steam dial. And for ages I've been like, why isn't it creating any steam? Like, what is going on? And then when I looked at it, I was like, oh, oh my God, I've had that set down for like years. <laughs> so um, now my iron is obviously functioning like an iron, which it should. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of an idiot. So there we go. Our back facing I've stitched together, but is now interfaced as one continuous piece. How neat is that? Do you know what? I sew with a lot of viscose. I sew with jersey. I sew with a lot of um, fiddly fabrics as well, like chiffons and georgettes and stuff. And sometimes you forget just how nice it is to sew with cotton poplin. It doesn't move anywhere. It doesn't, it just doesn't go anywhere or do anything. I'm experimenting with camera angles today, so just bear with me. Hang on. There we go. That hopefully works a bit. Um, yeah, I've forgotten how nice it is to just work with stable fabrics. Like, it's so lovely. Um, because they just, they just do what you want them to do, which is very, very exciting. So, press that flat. I'm being so well behaved making this as well. Like, I am ironing all of it. But that is because this week I basically set up my desk as a sewing desk and I've done most of my actual work in the living room because as of next week, I'm going to be on site every day because I'm working on a massive event build. So, I was like, I'm actually going to leave my desk set up for sewing so that when I do get home, I'm able to sew and then when I am in the house it's no issue now we have a separate dining table to um, go through and besides sometimes sometimes it's nice to work in here with Alan and sometimes it's nice when we both got meetings to be in different spaces so we don't have to like sync up our calendars um, because both of us are working from home like well I've had two weeks at home because I've not been well uh, so I work from home every day but normally both of us would be in like three days a week um, and I, you know, I've been working late a lot as well. Um, I have had some lovely messages from you guys, by the way, asking how my new job is. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's, it was my dream job when I applied for it, and I'm delighted to say it is still my dream job. I love it. 
Um, my t like the team are just wonderful and the events I get to work on are amazing and it just uses the right bits of my brain. It challenges me and I like that. I, get to, I don't have to do any sales anymore, which is a dream. All I have to do is be handed over events and make them work, which I can do because it's like a logistical puzzle, which is very enjoyable. So here we go, facings on, lovely. Right, so now we need to stitch our facings together at the shoulders. Um, I prefer to do it this way around. I can't remember what way the pattern tells you to do it in terms of, I think it tells you to do the dust, um, bust darts first, but, I, I just don't read instructions anymore, it's terrible. Uh, you guys will see t today, tomorrow, depending on, basically depending on how light it is when I get home with my new hair, because I'm going to take photos of the jumpsuit I've just made, and it's so beautiful, it's like over there, oh my god, I love it. Um, but I did not read any of the instructions to make that jumpsuit. Um, I read the instructions for this because I was pattern testing, but I'm not rereading them because it, it's a shell top, you know, it's fine. I'm wearing it. If I have any questions, obviously I can peruse them, but I don't feel the need to. Um, but yeah, I found that recently a lot, like when I was making the jumpsuit. Yeah, I just, I just didn't look at anything actually, because I looked at the pattern pieces and was like, okay, it's inseam pockets. We've got th um, three pleats at the front of each leg, three pleats at the back, and then it's just princess seams. I know how to do those things, so I'm just going to put a film on and do it. <laughs> so I just didn't read any. I think the thing is as well with the big four patterns, whenever I read the instructions, I go horribly wrong because I find them not to be particularly well worded. Whereas when I'm doing it myself, I very, even if I'm not looking at the instructions, I very rarely make mistakes because I'm, I don't question myself. I think I have fairly good sewing instincts. I hope I do anyway. And sometimes when I'm reading instructions, I know how to do something. And then I read it and go, oh, do I? And yes, I do. And I should have just listened to my own brain to begin with and not tried to interpret whatever, whoever has written those instructions has, wants me to do. Uh, so yeah, I think I've got into a bad habit <clears throat> of, yeah, of not, uh, of not reading instructions. But I have a really, really big project coming up in November that I'm gonna share with you on a weekly basis. I'm so excited. Um, I'll do a proper intro video for that on Instagram, um, where I, I am going to need to read the instructions. So what I've done is, for that project, I've got the pattern pieces printed, and I also got the instructions printed so I can write all over them, because that really helps. I find it quite hard on my laptop with PDF instructions sometimes to like process them. So, fingers crossed, that helps. Now I'm going to stop wittering away and start doing some sewing. So we're going to do our shoulder seams, like so. And then we are going to do our bus starts quickly and then we can catch up after that. I have sewn up the centre back seam because I didn't really feel the need to show you guys that. I mean, it's, it's a centre back seam. And we've attached it to the shoulders. Bust darts are done. I need to check on the one I'm wearing which way I've pressed the darts because although the pattern says to press them down, for a larger bust, sometimes lifting it up like that is actually a lot nicer. Um, and like, it, yeah, it's just a more flattering shape. So I might do that um, because I'm, I'm about 90% sure. If I look inside this one, that the darts did the darts come up? Where are my darts? I oh, know they went down in this one. Okay, well, mm, I don't know. Let's have a think. We don't have to think about that for the minute, um, because I press them both ways, so they're at least secure. What we do now need to do is pop our facing on. So we've stitched this together at the shoulders. We've also stitched our facing together at the shoulders, like so. There we go, look at that, lovely. So we're gonna fit one over the other. I need this to be the other way around. I love this art gallery fabric, by the way. It's the first one I've ever used, and I'm very impressed. It is, it's a lovely quality. So, interfacing, I always find very strange to put on necklines because, well, particularly if you're using like slippery or stretchy fabrics, because sometimes 
but you've really got to make sure that you use the right way interfacing. It's like one of the only times you will hear me actually adhering to techniques because it ruins fabric if you use the wrong way interfacing. Like I've used quite a stiff interfacing on this because um, it's a cotton poplin, it'll take it. It's structured enough that it's not gonna move around while I sew it, so that's fine. But, you know, if I'm using a viscose or I'm using, like, a, I don't know, a chiffon or something, I will go to the lengths and I will buy proper lightweight um, interfacing. Sometimes I prefer, if, if in doubt, because some fabrics are really bad interfaced, do a, do a test. But what you can do, and this is a little secret that lots of people don't know, is if you just need to interface something lightweight, half the time you're better just cutting an extra version and doubling up because the point is to like reinforce it, right? So if you're using a really lightweight fabric and you can't find an interfacing that works, by just doubling up the same fabric, or you know, like um, if you are using a chiffon or something, um, you could even use a like a solid block color underneath if you wanted to like, you know, make it less transparent. Um, and you could use just like a basic white viscose or something. Um, but yeah, like, you can use the same fabric. I do it all the time where I just use a second layer of fabric because often it also improves the drape of the garment and makes it feel more like, um, yeah, just, just it looks better as well um, because you don't have that weird boxy sort of vibe that you get with um, something that's been over interfaced or not over interfaced necessarily but just too too stiffly interface i think there's also like sprays and stuff you can use i think some people use um like a lighter interfacing and then spray starch or the same fabric and spray starch um which you know is another way of doing it so right let's make sure we pin so you can't see what i'm doing right now this is my lap one second um i am just pinning the apex there we go so when we did the v-neck i had to be so careful and like it was so fiddly but the scoop neck um, is a lot easier. It's just it's just a lot easier. Um, so you will have noticed I've not finished my seams um, because I don't know how I would like to finish my seams yet. So I'm going to sit with it and wait. And if I want to overlock them, I can. Um, there's no need with this garment. I'd say to do French seams or anything. You could, but I don't think it would add anything personally. Um, there we go. So our Facing is pinned on, so we're gonna, oh, sorry, I just got a pin in my hand. Uh, last night, I should say, while I was finishing off the zip for my play suit, uh, sorry, for my jumpsuit, I did that zip four times, because I had to take four, how many, four inches, I think, four inches out the back, because it had enough bust room, but the back was huge. So I had to take, yeah, like, I think it was four inches in total to each side out of the back of that um, jumpsuit. But I didn't want to get rid of that first. I wanted to put the zip in where it needed to be and then get rid of the excess fabric so I knew it fit and I didn't accidentally cut it all off. But oh my god, I did it so many times and I think I stabbed myself with pins more times last night than I have in the last two years. I don't know what it was. I just, yeah, I just kept doing it. It was awful. Um, so I feel like a pin cushion this morning. But we're all good. Um, I've also, I'm a bit of a convert now to glass head pins. I really like them. Um, or I think these actually, these might be plastic ones. But nonetheless, I really like them because I can see them. And when I drop them, A, well, A, they're longer, which I like. They're a really good length. Um, but yeah, if I drop them around the house, I see them instantly, which is really good. And also, I just find that they don't slip. Some of my pins, if you're working with like a loose weave fabric, go all the way through and then you lose them. Whereas you don't with this. And I don't sew over them accidentally because I can see them. So, you know, that's that's something I'm really enjoying at the moment. It sounds silly, but I don't know. It's it's always useful to know what people are sewing with, I guess. So let's put this on. We're then gonna do, because there's a little bit of a wiggle at the back, we're going to do it very gently, very carefully, and then we are going to clip it, and there'll be a bit of this to make sure that it fits. So let's get this on, and then we're basically done. It's such a quick pattern, I love it. So 
so one of the things I like about this pattern is the way the facings are done. They use, they use a burrito method rather similar to what you would use for a shirt. So if I can remember this correctly, what you do is you open it out onto one of your shoulders like so. You make sure you've got your arm side pointing one way and your other arm side over here. No, hang on, wait. Right, I want that, that, which means I am entirely wrong, ignore me. Um, or I might be right, but actually this way is easier. So, we're going to roll it up. I'm going to roll it up to the midpoint, and then past it, so that we're into the other arm side here. Then, this is what you do, really make sure that's squished down as much as possible. And then you're going to open it out. like so and stitch it together now what i have just realized is i've done it the wrong way around so what you actually need to do sorry this is the worst explanation and this is genuinely why i don't do tutorials you need to turn your garment the right side out first because you know that would be useful wouldn't it uh, it just needs it needs a little bit of persuading to be flat but that's that's okay we can persuade it so that's our nice back that i've understitched as well We'll do a bit of pressing in a second. I'm just going to finger press a lot of this just to make sure it is rolled appropriately. That's the other nice thing about my structured cottons. You can finger press, uh, which is a technique I use quite a lot. Um, and it's much easier. So because I've had a stressful few weeks, I have uh, quite ashamedly been biting my nails, which I try not to do, but, you know, it happens. Um, however, when you have nails finger pressing is a lot easier because you do it the same way you would if you're going to rip paper like that um if you do that you can rip paper like that if you've never done it um so here we go looks a bit of a mess but it will look better in a second so we're going to do exactly what i just talked about but the right way around so let's roll 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 nice little burrito there we go and then we're going to open it out there we go here and here so we've got our wrong sides now encasing the right sides flip it over and then we get a little burrito like this and I am gonna be you will have noticed I haven't used that many pins doing this because again the fabric is so structured that I don't feel I need to however for this for this I do mainly so I don't sew through the wrong layers of fabric all right and there we go pin um, go and we're going to keep pinning around make sure that your burrito is right the way back and we are just pinning through two layers quick seam match there push it down it is fiddly but you know what once you've done it you kind of don't want to do it any other way um, and it gives you a nice continuous facing and you don't have to do that weird um, that thing that's almost like birthing an octopus uh, when you bag out um, the tops. It's one, it's the method that Great British Sewing Bee always gets you to do actually. In the books and in the TV show they always get them to, when they make a shell top or similar, um, you keep the back section separate so it's like a sort of three like that. So you've got back, back, front and then you pull the backs through to the front which works. But I actually think the effect from this is better and I think it's neater and a lot easier to not get wrong. Plus you can have a continuous back piece. So I have now pinned the living daylights out of that. Let us have a crack at sewing it. So, right, so again, you're getting a shot of my arms doing some ironing. Here we go. My phone is not behaving today. So that last time lapse uh, wasn't as long as it should have been. Um, but here we are. It's a bit wiggly, but that's okay because that's why we have an iron. And we're just gonna go over and make sure that all of these edges are lovely and sharp, which we will get again, because it's cotton. It's making this one in Bisco Chili, it's so comfortable in Bisco, actually, like it has to be said. Um, and I'm definitely, I have enough left of this, I think, to make like a cute pair of um, collot shorts for next summer, but obviously not relevant now, it is nearly November. Um, and I'm just going to give up on any form of summer clothing realistically because well, normally 
it's worth saying this, normally in a normal non-pandemic world, Adam and I go on holiday in October because Adam doesn't like heat and I do. So we compromise by going away in the off season, so it's not too hot, but then we go somewhere that would normally be very hot, so it's still hot enough for me, but cold enough for him. So like, um, we, went to, we went to Italy a couple of years ago, um, went to Rome, it was a wonderful holiday, and uh, we were very lucky actually, because it was about 25 degrees in um, end of October, which obviously was quite unseasonable. It was like, yeah, it was like 20, 25. Uh, loads of the locals were wearing coats, which was hilarious, and then Adam and I were in shorts, having a great time. Um, <laughs> So, you know, it's it's nice, like, um, just before the pandemic in 2019, we had a dream holiday to Rhodes, which we loved. Um, and that was, that was October, and it, it was, again, it was 25, 27 degrees, but the sea obviously warms up all summer. So we could still go in the sea, it was still really warm and lovely. Um, it's so close to Turkey, you forget. But anyway, I was going with, if we were going on holiday, I would still make a few, you know, those end summer projects that you don't get around to, I would make the effort, because I know I'd have another chance to wear them. But this year and last year, I don't. So we're just going to lean into into wintry projects, autumn fabrics. I do have um, some fantastic stuff planned. Sorry, you can just see my arms, which are not great. Um, there we go. Get some steam on that. So I'm a bit worried this is going to be quite boxy because obviously of the fabric and the, the sort of way it is. Um, but equally, I think because I've made a size down and hopefully um, it will just be like a sort of more of a shift top whereas this one is a bit more sort of floaty and flattering but this is for work at the end of the day so I think for me the biggest thing is I need comfortable clothes that I can wear at work that are smart enough and you can't see my bra at the side because that is a really bad look in a workplace um, but it, obviously if you are uh, one of the many of us with bigger boobs and smaller backs that's most of your life because no tops actually cover your whole arm side. Right, okay. Let's get this right way around now. We are so nearly there. Um, we are so, so nearly done with this actually. So what our next step is, I'm going to do this on a time lapse because I'm going to be ironing for about three years now. Um, we're going to flip the sides up and then sew one continuous side seam down, facing back down, and then hem it and we are done. So let's let's get the iron going over all of this and then we can have a look at the finished product than the other one obviously because it does it is a cotton so it doesn't drape in the same way but as somebody who tucks pretty much everything in that doesn't really bother me um I don't really go with a with a uh, what's it called um with a loose fit on things it's not really me it is quite boxy I will say that I think I do prefer the v-neck quite significantly but saying that it is very comfortable and I think it will soften up in the wash as well that is the thing with cotton poplins and stuff they do you start off quite stiff and then get softer over time but I mean I'm quite happy actually I think the neckline's a little high for me so I actually might go into the inside and make it a bit lower I might do that I don't think I have time today but I might make it a tiny bit lower and also there's there's a lot spare at the sides it is a very boxy pattern this so if I had a recommendation it would be to make it in a much drapier fabric like my other one which does fit better um but I do like it I like this pattern it it just fits which is nice I don't have to think about adding bust room and all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to, I think, take a tiny bit out the sides as well, so it's just a little bit more shell, um, and make the neck a little lower. But I don't think I will today. I'm going to wash it once, see how it comes out of the wash, and then go from there. Now, I'm on to the rest of my very busy Saturday. I'm going to go down to the shops with Adam, 
get all the food to make because basically our old next door neighbours we used to live next to are coming over for lunch which I'm so excited about um, they're a couple same age as us and yeah they're really wonderful people I'm so excited to see them um, but they're vegetarian so I'm going to make them and Adam because he'll eat it I won't um, something else today like I'm going to make a big uh, ratatouille from Mastering the Art of French Cooking because I love cooking um, and then I'm going to do lamb chops for Adam and I to go with it so we have a sort of meat option and then I'm going to do cauliflower cheese and roast potatoes and some form of steamed vegetable uh, so that there's options because I want it to feel like you know everyone's got lunch um, and I've got a crumble to make as well which I need to do today and then at four o'clock four three the landlords will get here to clean the house four off to the hairdressers and I am hoping and praying something very special from Hermes arrives today because I had a really cute date night plan for Adam and I with like an activity, it was going to be really fun but I've been somewhat let down by delivery so I'm fingers crossed for a cute romantic date night. Um, all that remains me to say is thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, if you preferred this one to the other ones because there's a bit more chat let me know, um, I'm still kind of finding my feet with this format and trying to find ways to, because the thing is, I miss my week in sewings, but equally, I just don't have time to film them now I'm back in the office. So it's finding a way where I still get to join you guys for some weekly sewing, and you can still get some like realistic sewing that isn't giant, huge, expensive project sewing. Um, and we still get to catch up. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. And don't forget to click the notification bell to hear whenever I release a new video. Have a wonderful Saturday, guys, and I'll see you later on.